Hey Pete, let me just have you say your name for the record so the people out there know who you are. I'm Pete Milo. I'm the head of vehicle development for Jeep Wrangler and Jeep Gladiator. And we're here um, in St. George looking at the brand new 2024 Jeep Wrangler. And in this video, we're going to go deep, guys. We're going to talk about everything that's new about it. We're going to talk about the different models, the powertrain, uh, and just kind of if you're out there shopping for one, uh, we're going to give you a full breadth view of what these guys have done. And it's tricky because from the outside, it looks very similar, but it isn't. It, it isn't, yeah. So we start with the front grille. This is the first time we changed the front grille since our 2018 model year launch. Um, the other key aspect of the, the front is the, the fact that uh, we've, we've removed the mast antenna. So, you know, it's, it's hard for Jeep to change because if it's not broken, don't fix it. But we moved it into the the windshield, as you can see there. Hey folks, today's video is brought to you by salvagereseller.com. This website allows you to bid live on online salvage auto auctions without a dealer's license. You can register for free or use the 20% off coupon in the description below. Go find your salvage car gem now. Yeah, you know, um, the antenna was cool, but it kind of would go boing, 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 boing if you did a tree or something. We right? listen to our customers, yeah. yep, and it can get snagged on the trails. Yeah. And you see a lot of aftermarket, you know, short little antenna. So we made that change. Uh, and while we're here, um, the new face is different based on the model, right? It is, yeah. So the Rubicon um, and the Willys have uh, unique faces based on, you know, the trim level. So the Willys is uh, right over here, and then we have the, the different inserts in the lamps between the two models. So you made it a little bit uh, shorter, and I guess that was because for the first time ever, you can now get an integrated worn winch from the factory. Exactly, yep. So the, uh, that's exactly right. We had to ensure the right amount of cooling flow, and so because of that, we did shorten it up, but we ensured that we had the right sizing for the, for the opening. But this is the, the first time Jeep has introduced an OEM factory installed winch. And how much, how, how much can this uh, winch? How? Yeah, so it's got an incredible load pulling capability of 8,000 oh, pounds. Yeah. Um, and also the nice thing about it is we've designed, developed, and validated it to meet OEM standards, durability and safety. Yeah, and I think people don't realize that because, you know, when you put a winch on, it obviously sometimes can compromise the crash testability of the vehicle. So when you guys do it, you take that all into account. We, we take it all into account, absolutely. Uh, and I think for me, that's very important because I'm sure like you, you put the most important thing in your life in the Jeep, and that's your family. Exactly, you got it. Yeah, all right, cool. So uh, um, kind of the, the, the entry level is right here. It's the yep. Willys or Willis. I, yep. You know what, I looked it's, that up. You can say it both ways. We, we, yeah, you can. We, we say Willys. <laughs> uh, that's just the way we say it. But what's new for the Willys in 24 mile year is we go from a 32 inch tire to a 33 inch BFG KO2 all-terrain tire. You get a standard rear locker, and we also offer the drive mode, the off-road button. In the willies now so it's a pretty nice upgrade for this package yeah it's sweet because obviously before um in the base uh, wrangler you couldn't get the rear locker i think you did have like i remember like i think there was like a big bear or something model that came along at some point that had that rear locker but it wasn't available in the standard yeah certain certain buzz models yeah. models over the years exactly but yeah now the willies come standard with it uh and then um in terms of pricing uh, it starts at about thirty-two thousand for the two-door and then the destination fee is just under 1700 so about 34000 This is your entry-level uh, Wrangler. It, it is. I mean, you can also get the, the Sport and the Sport S, but this is the, I would call it the entry-level upper capability uh, model. Upper. Yeah. What's under the hood? What, what, what's the powertrain? Let's, go. Let's open it up. Let's take yep. a look. Yeah. So I think you have, uh, what, four powertrains now? Three or four of them? We do. So yeah. this one happens to be the two-liter. Um, turbo. Two-liter turbo, which provides a, a great output of 270 horse, 295 pound-feet of torque. The torque is really nice on this thing. Um, on the other applications, we also have a 3.6 liter available, naturally aspirated. That's 285 horse, 260 pound-feet of torque. And then you get into the 392, uh, 470 horse, 470 pound-feet of torque with a four and a half second zero to 60 time. That thing is a lot of fun. And, and Roman, I'm sure you've driven one before. I have, actually um, it's up there. There, Yes, there yeah, it is. Let's walk up there. Let's take a look at it. And just while we're on the powertrains, that two liter coupled with the, the hybrid um, electric motors and battery, your horsepower increases to 375 and your torque increases to 470. So that hybrid, uh, the 4xe, is a great balance between performance and, and fuel economy. And this one is, I remember right, 470, 470, right? Correct. That's the easy one for yeah, me. That, that's the easy, easy one for me to remember as well. 
Uh, are these gettable now? For a long time, they were kind of unobtainium. Well, they're, they're still, um, I would say, challenging to get because there, there's uh, certain certain volumes that we're, we're maintaining on them. But yes, they're gettable. And, and the guy, uh, the, guy, the thing about this guy is it's, of course, the most expensive in the lineup. And I think it's, what, 88000 plus the 2000 So you're almost looking at a $90,000 Jeep. You are. Uh, and it's, it's a special Jeep uh, from the standpoint that this application with that 6.4, I mean, and the sound, you know, the ex active exhaust that you get with this thing, the four and a half second, zero to 60 time, it's um, quite the package. You know, it, people know that you're coming down the road and you just feel good driving it. In fact, I'm driving one uh, as my, my fast feedback vehicle right now and I love it. Hey guys, so I, I have the key to one right here uh, and uh, Jeep was kind enough to lend us this one to drive today. Plus, we're gonna take this back to Colorado to drive away here. In St. George, it's only about eight, nine hours from Boulder, and then we're going to have it to test. So I can't wait to actually uh, road trip it and then test it because, you know, we've had one at the office, but it'll be fun to spend some time with it. Now, uh, before we get to the interior, let's talk about these wheels because they're unusual. Yeah, so these are beadlock capable wheels. Um, and so these are the 35 inch BFG KO2 all terrain tire. And uh, like I said, beadlock capable. Yeah, which is. Uh, Pretty cool because in the past you, you've had to actually get real beadlocks to swap out the wheel. Not that these aren't real, but uh, I think the issue with beadlocks is they're illegal, right, on, on the street because they don't come off the rim if you take a corn if you take a turn too fast, which would allow the vehicle to potentially. Yeah, roll. And, and that's why we make them capable for yeah. our customers to upgrade if they want to. The other thing I'll mention is on this package you get an inch and a half additional suspension lift over the sport which provides you a great approach departure angle. 47.4 on the approach, 40.4 on the rear, and you get almost 13 inches of ground clearance. And since you got rid of the antenna, you now have the trail rated uh, badge on both sides. We do, yep, our customers do like that. Um, they love the trail rating badge, and now we do have it on both sides. And this one has the uh, roll back top. What's the official name for it? Uh, this is the power top. The power top, yeah, yep. which is not cheap. If I remember right, it's like a $4,000 option. It is, yeah. but it's a great feature um, from the standpoint of just press a button and, and now you're topless. Yeah, yeah, it makes it much easier. Not that it's hard to remove the traditional freedom panels, but this is so much easier. It is, and, it is. And here you've removed the uh, rear wind screen yeah, as well. The rear the rear quarter glass, yeah. um, also with you know a quick turn, they come off, put those, uh, store them, and you've got pretty much an open air look. Take the doors off if you wish, and you're fully open air. All right, well, let's head back before we go. I want to go on the inside of one that's got a got a roof so it doesn't have that okay. much sun glare. Uh, but the big news, guys, is uh, that the Jeep will now tow from 3,500 pounds to 5,000. Correct, how on certain that? models. Yeah, on certain models. Uh, how you, which, which models? Let's start with that. Yep, so a Rubicon X, um, all Rubicons actually, with the 2 liter and 3.6, will have the full float axle, which will allow, enable us to upgrade our trailer to it to 5,000 pounds. Which is a lot. It is. Um, it's a nice upgrade. Our customers are going to appreciate it. The additional stiffness that that full float axle gives just helped with J2807 trailer sway. And as a result, we were able to increase it, which is great for and our customers. And that's customer. on all Rubicons, you said? Uh, all Rubicons on certain powertrain applications. So I don't think that one does it right. Correct, yeah. yeah the, so. P, the, the hybrid, the 4xE, and the 392, unfortunately, um, we're, 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 uh, it's the 2 liter ICE and then the 3.6 liter ice. And hopefully uh, you guys have a, a, an Airstream here, uh, 4,800 pounds or something? 4,800 pound Airstream. Yeah. So we, we'll you guys get towing. the opportunity to try that out. Yeah, all right, well let's talk about, uh, of course, if you guys are Jeep fans, uh, you know immediately uh, by the, the color here, which is blue, that this is the uh, 4 by E. Um, and that means that it's got about 20-ish miles of all electric range. Correct, 21 miles all electric range uh -huh. and then you get 49 mpge okay. with, with uh, electric power and so uh, really nice balance between performance and fuel efficiency and this has been just a huge success right it's the best-selling hybrid in america right now it, it is and it accounts yep. for what almost 40 percent of wrangler sales yes um, it's been an amazing success and again it provides outstanding power 375 horse 470 pound feet of torque but if you want to run all electric mode you can right a lot, a lot of these short drives that our customers do they can do them all day, back and forth, without even turning on the engine. And, also, and it also qualifies for the tax credits. It does. Yeah, which is nice. Now, this is something cool that, that, that's brand new for this year, right? I'm going I'm to steal it and bring it over, and maybe you can explain what this is. So um, uh, this is, uh, does this come with, or do you have to buy it, or nope, how does this it, work? it comes standard now with the 4xe. Um, 
So, I, you know, most of you guys are certainly familiar with, um, you know, this coupler. It basically is, is a way to charge the, the Jeep, but in this case, it works the opposite. So tell me about this. Yeah, so basically this is our Jeep power box. It provides 3.6 kilowatts of total capacity. We got 120 volt outlets here that are 30 amp. So all you have to do is plug it in, power it up, and you can power your equipment, your uh, your tools, whatever you need, up to 3.6 kilowatts, so, 30 amps. So if power goes out in your house, you could you could plug in your Jeep and plug in your refrigerator. Yes, exactly. So um, I don't need my generator anymore. 3.6 kilowatts is, is a quite lot. a bit. Yeah, it is a lot. And the other nice thing about this is we've implemented a, a generator mode, which if the state of the charge of the battery gets to a certain level, the engine can automatically turn on to replenish the battery or keep the power going in yeah. the house. So you basically got a, what is this one? What's under the hood of this one? I don't know what's under there. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. But it's, you know, a two to 300 this, this, horse, horse. This is a two liter. A two to 300 horsepower generator. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. To power this, so this comes with the car now. It does. How about yeah. if somebody has a four by can they can they buy this? Um, it requires an update to the, oh, yeah. the, the yeah. bi-direct, it requires a bi-directional IDCM, yeah. which is new for 24 miles, so it does require a hardware update. Uh, so it's not that simple. Nope. So the, I'll plug this, so the 2024s have it, uh, older ones, not so much. All right, let's uh, talk about uh, some of the safety improvements that you've made. Absolutely. So. Very proud of the execution of our, another first for Jeep. We've introduced side current airbags, both front and rear. It's hidden behind this trim. Team spent a great deal optimizing the size as to not compromise headroom, ingress, egress. Yeah, that's um, great. Yep. Yeah, that's really great. And then for me, uh, and this is, you know, uh, a me thing, but uh, I love the fact that now you have power seats with uh, lumbar. Yeah, and did I mention that we developed them to meet the 34 inches of water fording? Yeah, tell me about that. Yeah, so so basically anything in our in our vehicle systems that's above 30 to 34 inches, we make sure that switches are sealed, motors work, um, and they can go through water at that level. Water can go in the cabin, but these seats will continue to work after the fact. And then the other thing you've done is you've kind of increased the drivability of the Jeep by uh, changing the glass around, right? Changing the carpet around. T tell me about what you've done there. Yeah, so we did quite a bit with an acoustic package to quiet down the cabin on certain models. So we did add acoustic laminated side glass. We already had it in the windshield, but, we also, yeah. Yeah, but we also upgraded some other acoustic treatments with, this one doesn't have a headliner, but headliner material, the carpets. We see up to a 5 dB improvement in uh, some of our models. That's great. And how much does a four by you start at? I think it was like 50K, right? It's about 50K, correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then uh, since we're in the interior, what have you done inside that's new? Yeah, so I would argue that the centerpiece of the, the 24 mile a year change is the, the widescreen 12.3 inch radio um, with the full gamut of apps and connectivity. Works flawlessly, very responsive, um, wireless, wireless connection to your Android Auto or your Apple CarPlay and just the the clarity i mean it's it's such a nice upgrade as i mentioned i drive one uh daily and from the previous model it's just a great upgrade it's got the latest uconnect right it does is that uconnect 5 i think it's 5 it's uconnect 5, five yeah yeah, yeah. The, uh, the other the other thing to, to note kind of related to that is we also introduce a seven mic array which has beam forming technology this happens to be an open air vehicle not like the other one but um, one of the voices of the customer was, hey, when my, my vehicle's open, I can't take a phone call. Mm. Um, and so what we've done is we've introduced that technology, which filters out wind noise, road noise, defroster noise, and we see a significant improvement on the far end of phone call conversations. So which one did you say is yours? Is this one or is the 392? What right now I'm driving the 392. Yeah. Okay. Um, this would be my, my, my next choice, but um, you know, I think it just depends on the timing of what's available. How about colors? Any new colors for 2024? Uh, Yes, there are, and um, Anvil, right? Anvil's one of yeah, them. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's there's quite a, quite a few. We can get you the, the full list. Okay. Uh, and then um, I always like to ask this: What's your kind of your favorite uh, part of the new Jeep? If you were to pick one of the improvements that you've done to it. Yeah. So that's a tough question because there are so many firsts on this Jeep. It's really about refinement. Um, yeah, it's evolutionary, yeah. certainly not revolutionary. So it just depends on what type of customer you are. If you are an off-road enthusiast. You're gonna love the, the factory installed winch. You're gonna love the, the full float rear axle. The everyday driver is gonna love the power seats. They're gonna love the quietness of the cabin and they're gonna love the, the speech intelligibility improvements with the seven mic array. So I, I, but, I, sorry, Roman, I guess no. the, the really the, the centerpiece is that 12.3 radio. I mean, it is, 
it's, it's a great, um, great, great connectivity and daily use. So. So I have to ask. Obviously, you, you haven't had much competition in this space. Obviously, Foreigner was around, but now that the Bronco is here, is this pushing you guys to innovate to do all this, or is this something you were doing anyway? This is something we're doing anyway. Um, the Broncos out there. Yep. Um, respect them. Respect what they've done. Respect how they've, for the most part, copied what we've done. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they um, did. But I'll, I'll be politically, they benchmarked the Wrangler. Yeah, <laughs> so when you have 10 years to do that, they're going to come out with a, a decent product. But we are still the off-road king. We have the best on-road driving vehicle, again, in my opinion. I'm a little biased, but um, all of these things were refinements that were in the works anyway. You know what's amazing to me? Um, I remember like doing a story about you know sales. You, you announced sales, like I said. This 4 by now accounts, as of last quarter, 38% of your sales for Wranglers. But I remember when Wrangler surpassed a quarter million units, that's the number of vehicles per year. And I thought to myself, how crazy is that, right? That's like once upon a time the Accord and the uh, Camry were at that number. And now you've got this, let's face it, a hardcore off-roader, which is what it is, right? Being yep. used by people as an everyday uh, commuter, as a family truckster. Exactly. What do you think is, what's the magic? What, why is that? Well, it's, it's a few different things. Yeah. It's it just the enjoyment of driving. It's... Uh, life it's just open air it's freedom it, there, there's something to that and once somebody's in the vehicle we've made enough on-road refinements that once they drive it they don't want to get out of it it just that's what it's all about it's just that feeling of youth excitement adventure it, that, that's what this gives you yeah and now you've got um for all of you out there are looking at a wrangler you've got i mean the full gamut right it starts at about 30 I always like to add in destination because it is a significant amount. So at about 34, all the way up to about 90,000, you know, for that bad boy up there. Exactly. Um, we, we offer something for every one of our customers. What have you done to make it better off-road? So you still have, obviously, in the Rubicon, you have the traditional uh, front locker, rear locker, center locker. Yep. You have the disconnectable sway bar. Um, now you have the full floating Dana 44. Any, you've got the lift. Anything else you've done to make it better off-road? Well, the winch. Yeah. We still have... Uh, uh, incredible approach, departure, ground clearances, mm -hmm. um, but we mentioned the full float axle, we mentioned the winch, and um, you know those are the, the key things that, that are making the Jeep. I mean, really, honestly, driving the Jeep and benchmarking other competitors, nothing can stack up. So we didn't have to do a ton, um, but these are refinement items that are our enthusiasts are going to appreciate. So when you say 34 inches of water fording, right? 34 inches of water fording. You have to drive it through a river or yeah. a stream. I think you saw the video or, yeah, earlier. I was, I was thinking about Yucca that. Yucca Proving yeah. Grounds is uh, yeah. a, a couple hours from here. That's where we do our development, and every one of these Jeeps goes through that, that trough. All right, let me ask you a couple more numbers, and then we'll uh, wrap this up. So 4 by e uh, MPGE, what's the number on this guy? 49 MPGE. E, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, and 21 miles all electric range. And the battery size is? Uh, 16, uh, 16 16.3 kilowatts. Uh, we'll, kilowatt have hours, yeah. we'll have to verify that. Okay, yeah, so good size battery. Yeah. Uh, and now you can use that battery to power your house. If, 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 exactly. If you need to. All right. What a great feature. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you have it, guys. Kind of your uh, first comprehensive look at the new Wrangler for 2024. When will these be hitting the dealerships? Uh, well, they're, they'll be out there in Q2 of this year. So soon. Soon. Well, wow. Q, Q, Q3. Three. Actually. Okay, yeah. so coming up soon. Okay. Yep. Um, and uh, we're going to be here doing a whole bunch of different videos. So we're going to be towing, we're going to be off-roading, uh, and then, uh, uh, you know, go to alltfl.com. I believe the embargo starts on Friday. So, um, you know, this is a pre-embargo video. So, uh, you know, we can't talk about driving impressions, but when we get to that, you'll have a complete uh, look and review of the new 2024 Wrangler. Thanks, Roman. Thank you very Always much. Always a pleasure. Much appreciated. See you guys next time. Ciao.